Okay, hey everyone, to another episode of On The Rest from Off The Cuff. Today we have a really interesting review for you from a nice new micro brand called Autowalk. They're dedicated to creating high quality mechanical watches with unique and bold design philosophies. Um, and they really aim to redefine the aesthetic at the wrist and really make your time more unique than others. They were inspired by Julius Caesar's cipher, uh, once used to encrypt messages between authorities, so you can actually uh, decipher the word Autowalk as the word unique. So you can see uh, they're all about being unique and a little bit quirky and different and just doing things uh, at their own pace. And uh, in terms of the type of watch, I consider this a wild card watch, some key common characteristics and design language. When you're looking for something to be kind of your wild card piece within a collection, it really just means it's that standout or statement time piece that trades versatility and timelessness for all out style and peak design. This is their Windows Pro Blue. Ooh, yes, it sounds a, more like an operating system than a wristwatch, uh, but it was actually inspired by the FM monitor on a radio. Uh, and they even went to the lengths of developing a special mechanical movement to adapt the design for uh, you able for you to be able to read the time horizontally. Um, so a lot to unpack there. Uh, the time right now is about 8.15 uh, p.m. And if you can see that on the screen, uh, then you're doing pretty well for yourself. Otherwise, let's look forward to zooming the camera out, getting this piece in hand, and taking a closer look. Okay, now while not super intuitive in terms of the time reading here, let's go ahead and get it to uh, focus, you can see basically the hours are up here, the minutes down here, and then the seconds will be running. This is a non-hacking movement, so those seconds will continue to run as long as you've wound it. Um, and then you can see right there, 15 minutes, uh, and then the eight o'clock, um, you know, with the hash mark there. So they've split these up, so you have a little bit more room, but you can see there's uh, the 12, the one, two, three, four, five, uh, so on and so forth so where they've staggered them uh, but the uh, it, it does help though because there are the little tick marks that are there as well that are uh, aligning with the numbers so actually pretty easy to read definitely something to get used to uh, a lot going on here in terms of the color play and the finishing and the shapes but very quickly uh, it actually has a really interesting and cool box so it's of course signed Autowalk and you can pop this open I think there's like a little bit of a magnet there and uh, I just thought this was really neat uh, fully uh, leather and it's just actually really well made in terms of being something for travel uh, and this just the shape is unique and then of course you get your little instructions hang tag and whatnot but I just thought that that was worth sharing just because it was again that unique now speaking of unique this watch, the Windows Pro Blue, again, Windows Pro, I really get a kick out of that. It's a 42 millimeter in diameter watch, so 42 millimeters across, 13 and a half millimeters thick, and then 45 millimeters lug to lug. Um, it's 316L stainless steel. It has a flat sapphire, as you can see. And it uh, does have this kind of stepped and polished and coated bezel. So you can see the polish, polish, and then in between there's that blue coating uh, that's there that you can also see accenting uh, everywhere from the crown guards to the crown itself. And then another strip or stripe, however you want to call it, uh, there that's blue. But this looks more like an actual anodized blue kind of insert versus this looking more coated. So there's definitely a nice play and kind of mixture and you can see different types of finishing there uh, where you get kind of the matted, the machined uh, with also some blasting there uh, that plays off of itself very, very nicely. Very clean, very interesting little rotor there which you can see whirring around appears to be based off of the Miyota 82S0. So, nice little piece. You can see, very interesting. And again, they do things a little bit different, whether it be their naming convention or you know anything like that. 
So when they reached out, uh, you know, for me to possibly take a look, I did take a look and yeah, I just thought this would be a fun one to share and definitely falls kind of within that category um, of uh, a wild card watch. And there are some really cool and nicely done uh, details here that are just kind of spread about on this piece. And it's just, it's very interesting and very nostalgic, of course. I think the blue colorway is probably gonna be a little bit more contemporary versus, you know, blacks and silvers, where it probably would have looked a little bit more like those vintage uh, analog radio setups. Um, but it's pretty nice. You do get a push-pull crown, which is signed. Again, you saw the display case back. You're gonna be getting this cool seven-layer dial uh, that has the nice printed indexing throughout. The water resistance on here is only three atmospheres or 30 meters, so not something that I would really you know, want uh, in terms of water sports or anything like that. But, uh, you know, if it gets rained on or wet, something spills, uh, as long as that crown is pushed in, you should be good to go. Um, I wouldn't go, you know, submerging it or anything like that um, with just that limited water resistance. But, um, again, uh, it, it's not really meant to be that. I don't think anybody sees this and thinks, oh, man, this is perfect for me to go play sports in or, you know, <laughs> go surfing or, or go for a swim in. This is definitely more of kind of a casual, fun piece. Uh, it does have 22 millimeter lugs, which are hooded, so you cannot see uh, that they actually are cut out and then go underneath. And then this uh, strap actually flares out and then it flares down to 20 millimeters at this fully polished sign buckle here. Nothing crazy, uh, just fully polished. You can see nicely milled though, which is great. And then this nice uh, strap, which does have some great padding, and then you do get a little bit of stitch work, which honestly reminds me a little bit of kind of the old vintage, uh, you know, 1950s and 60s car seats and the inlays within the door panels and everything to have that little contrast stitch. So I think that's a nice touch. And then of course the coloring here with the blue is also very nice. Uh, and it is also uh, removable with quick release spring bars, which also helps uh, in terms of, you know, swapping it out or anything like that. So with that said, let's actually get this piece on the wrist and see how it wears. All right, guys, as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, this is not a small timepiece by any means. And if I get it up close to the camera, you're gonna be getting a little bit of lens distortion there. So it's not gonna be the most legible watch. So what I like to do is keep my hand uh, a little bit further away. And what we'll do is just bring in and kind of tighten the shot here so you guys can get a little bit of a truer aspect ratio of how it's gonna wear on the wrist. You can see it actually, considering the dimensions, it sits pretty well because it has some nice rounded edges, uh, lays nice and flat, quite ergonomic. You know, it doesn't uh, dig into the wrist. There's no hot spots or anything like that. Uh, and it actually looks like a lot of fun. It almost reminds me, the funny thing is, it kind of reminds you more of a digital screen that is imitating an analog layout versus it actually being this analog layout, um, you know, with different cutouts and layers and everything like that. So I think that might just be the way that the blue here plays off of the light. It does have a bit of almost like an electric luminescent uh, kind of uh, sheen to it, which almost makes it look like a screen. Uh, which I don't know if they did that on purpose. If they did, very cool. If they didn't, hey, you know, uh, it, it actually worked out for them. So very, very nice. Again, my choice on this, you know, if I was to kind of pick which one uh, of the litter, I probably would have chose something a little bit more sterile, you know, more silver and black. Uh, but the blue, again, is just a lot of fun and kind of uh, stands out and gives you a lot of pop, uh, which I think is worth it. And then you can see you still have a nice moving element that is sweeping away which is the seconds readout there uh, just underneath the center area of the dial um, and yeah it's, it's it's quite legible you know it's just your brain kind of has to remember which way it works where to go you're gonna be looking at the hour first then you're gonna be looking down for the minute or if you know what hour it is then you, it's easy for you to just kind of search for the minute not super easy of course because of the way the increments are broken down but 
uh, you know, I think as long as, you know, if you're on one of those main uh, longer tick marks, you know, every five minutes, you should be good to go. Um, and then, of course, it's just a little estimation in between if you are kind of looking at a glance and you really are trying to figure it out. But because it's not hacking, it's not like you can really uh, set that seconds uh, to be super precise anyway in terms of getting everything, uh, you know, any level of sync with atomic time. So, uh, yeah, this is, again, it's a fun piece. They probably didn't need to make it this legible because clearly this isn't about just pure time reading functionality. There's a lot more to it. So with that said, let's actually get it off the wrist for some loom shots, the light transition, and closing thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights here. As you can see, some really interesting loom. Not ultra legible, so what I'm going to do is actually maybe hit it with a little... If I can find it in the dark here, <laughs> a little black light uh, to just kind of, which is going to make some things light up and be loomed, which aren't normally loomed. So there we go. So you can see it looks like a green loom used on the inners. And then the cool thing is, which I didn't realize, is that outer, that blue tone that wraps around is actually loomed, as well as uh, the what's, you know, that little inlay also on the crown guard. So very cool. I mean, I kind of wish it had stronger loom now, even though that's not really kind of uh, what the theme of this piece is. It's not like some super sporty watch, but I got to say, this <laughs> knowing that it has this loom is actually really, really cool. Like, I actually a lot more interested in this piece now just because that the fact that it has loom so i really wish you know maybe for a future iteration version 2.0 we get uh, a little bit more dedicated loom because i think that actually adds a whole ton of interest to this piece like you can see even the seconds are loomed as they kind of go around so very very cool i don't know how much you know how long my uh my camera will even be able to keep a focus on this as that starts to fade but one thing i always like to work in of course uh is a low light transition and wow you can see the blue on that loom is actually still pretty radiant even with a minor light source so very cool and then of course this would be charged a lot better if we were actually just out in uh out and about in you know daylight for about 10 minutes it would be burning way brighter than it would be for me just putting the black light on it here for a couple minutes so uh, i will say the low light here is fantastic uh because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight oh you can see there uh what happens when everything dies except for that bezel lighting um wow it does have a bit of an electric look to it the way it captures and grabs the light so very very cool um but anyways yeah i mean it's nice to see what these colors textures and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field you know with that really perfect well-lit situation uh so it's nice to see you know what more realistically even some harsher lighting here which typically could expose any type of you know uh defects within the finishing or execution but you can see here everything's pretty good i would say maybe uh on the strap there's uh the um you can see the stitching maybe not totally perfect but this isn't some multi thousand dollar piece it's not cheap oh did i mention the price guys uh, it's 650 which some of you are like that's super expensive some of you are like wow that's actually not that expensive for such a fun little time piece so uh something to discuss is actually i did find when i looked at the website there was actually a discount code i don't know how long it's going to work for but it basically was for 15 percent off and it was newcomer 2023 i'll leave a link in the description but i'll just this is just kind of fun to play with this one there just because it's just look how cool that is i don't know there's something rad about this this uh this uh, really earned some brownie points by having loom. I thought it was going to be pretty one-dimensional, um, you know, without the loom. But I will say the loom definitely adds 
just a certain level of fun to it, which I can appreciate. So guys, closing thoughts on the wrist, it definitely wears uh, similar to like, let's say a smartwatch, but of course with more heft, considering it is steel and you know, it does have a mechanical movement in there, uh, quite a few layers to that dial. So it's not this lightweight thing uh, like that you would get from, let's say like an Apple watch. Um, and then when it terms, uh, whoa, we're, we're, rewind that. Hey, okay. Now, when it comes to model variants, check the links uh, down in the description for options and availability uh, because it's just, you know, when you have these types of more niche brands and they're doing a couple of runs, you just never know what they have available or what will be coming into stock or newly released by the time you watch this. Uh, in terms of comparable models, you know, there's not much to compare to wildcard watches just because they're so kind of off the wall, but feel free to leave a comment in the description if there is anything that really jumps into mind uh, that could be a real comparable for this. I mean, looking at this right now, as much as depth and there is with that dial and, you know, some of the layers and everything like that, the mixture of finishing, it, it really does almost render backlit like it's a flat screen and this is meant to look like that, you know, like it's like it's re-representing. So I don't know, there's some type of really interesting meta look to it where it actually is analog but it looks like digital kind of interpretation of analog so i don't know there's something fun about that for sure uh so for me guys bottom line here this is definitely a fun wild card uh, type of watch with a very distinct retro vibe that i think goes a long way um and then you kind of add in of course a little bit of playfulness uh with that um with that added loom which was a total bonus that I, I wasn't even prepared for uh so i thought that that was really cool but let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do a like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys yeah.